If, in fact, um, state police gets their budget restored and everything, would we go back to the way it was for the last 30 years, bringing them in to uh, fill in for us? I mean, we all know the work that they do. They bring in the cruisers. They know the area. Mm -hmm. So we bring them back, and then that maybe would reduce the uh, summer coverage budget. It's not their budget. Their budget was fine. Um, they were actually looking for an increase in their budget. The true problem was with the coverage areas that they had, <coughs> they didn't have, I remember some weekends that we'd have a one or even no troopers come down because they were tied up in other places. Mm -hmm. And again, they're experiencing the same thing we are. The workforce has changed. The people coming in are different. They have a different mindset about what they want to do. So having, counting on the state police in this time frame right now is just not something I can count on. I have to have that as my stopgap. Um, I will certainly be speaking with a new colonel. Obviously, I, I have a very close re relationship with a prior colonel, uh, working as he worked down here in Troop A and coordinating uh, our efforts to the best financial benefit of the taxpayer. But it was just one of those things. It was uh, a difficult spring, and I wasn't going to stand by idly and hope I could get more troopers. Sometimes on the nights they expect they're going to be sending people to us, and they have to withdraw them because something else has happened somewhere else, and yeah. I have to have a, a fallback plan to that. It is bringing in these outside agencies. Certainly, if I can get it, if I can get support from the state that's not coming out of our directly out of our funding, that's what I would opt for. But I couldn't do it, so that's why I went to this. See, because I'm looking at the taxpayer side of it on that on that aspect. I mean, first of all, we all know. I mean, you got the state beach, state park. All that state property, mm -hmm. we should get something in return. I and the fact that in the really last more. 30 to 40 years, you know, they've come down, they've handled it out of their own detail account, doesn't affect us. And I understand, you know, what the hardship and things you went through the summer and the way it was done was done quite well. But I still, I just think that state police presence down there stands out by itself. I mean, they know the area, they, you know, you, catch them, you clean them with arrests and things like that. And, uh, I just think it was a great program, and hopefully we can get that restored in the I'm future. Ho I'm hoping that things progress in this country. I mean, again, it, this is not a Hampton issue alone. Yeah. Recruitment for law enforcement is in a dramatic spiral down. Yeah. If you read any of the trade journals on law enforcement, they'll tell you that recruitment is just so difficult right now. When you look at the city of Dallas, what they went through, what they didn't report, was two months prior to that, 40 officers just decided to resign and retire because they, they had had enough. Um, so as they go through these things, um, that's what we're faced with. Uh, certainly, uh, the relationship with the state police is strong, and if I could get them to, if I get somebody else to pay for it, I would. But in this circumstance, if things come back during my tenure as chief to where we can get that, certainly, I would reduce the expenditure to the taxpayer.